Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to part two of this big O mini series. In this portion of the mini series, we're going to go over some coding examples to solidify the concepts that we learned in the last video. The goal of this video is to get some hands-on experience with some of the algorithmic complexities that we discussed in the last video, which should help to solidify your understanding of the concepts. This portion of the series is intended for you to follow along with so that you can get your own hands-on experience with using these algorithms in practice. What you will need to follow along with this tutorial is you will need to download Node.js by going to this website here, nodejs.org. And when you go to this website, basically the first page that you land on, you're going to be presented with an option to download. You're going to click this button on the left here, and this button is going to open an installer for you, which is pretty self-explanatory. This isn't a difficult installation whatsoever, which is one of the reasons why I chose to use Node. Yeah, so once it's installed, you should be able to check that you have it installed by opening your terminal and typing node v. And this will give you your node version. Your version is going to be different from mine. My version is actually uh, an older version, but it's not going to matter for the purposes of this video. So whatever version they have here is OK for what we need to use it for. And also, um, you might be using an IDE, but for me, I just use Vim. It's probably already pre-installed in your system. You can probably type vi big OJS and it would probably open an empty file for you. The file is not empty for me because I will explain what this is um, soon. Anyways, any text editor is okay. You can either use Vim like I will be using, or you can use Nano or you can use an IDE like VS Code or something like that. Anything works. As long as you're able to edit the file and save the file, then we should be good to go. So yeah, um, I have this file. And within this file, I have a couple of very large strings containing thousands of words. And to further solidify the concepts that we learned in the last video, we're going to be implementing a linear search algorithm, which is basically a searching algorithm that has a complexity of O of N which is one of the complexities that we learned about in the last video. So we're going to be implementing that algorithm on our own. So we can go ahead and uh, open this file up. And as you can see here, I have the text that we're going to be traversing through. And I will make this text available to you on GitHub so that you can download the file. And then you can just open that file and you will already have the text contained within it. Anyways, so what we're going to do is, currently, these are just very large strings containing uh, thousands of words, but we want to, instead of iterating through the string and iterating through every character in the string, we want to iterate through every word in the string and search for a particular word. So what we're going to want to do is, let's start off with this medium sized string here. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to split this really long string into an array of words. So every word within this string is going to be its own element in an array. So what we can do is we can create another variable. So const, um, let's call this array of words because this is actually going to be an array. And we can actually use a built-in function by taking medium string, which is the string that we have above. And then we can just use this function split. And then we can put a delimiter here. So basically, for every space, this string will get split. So that means that there's a space here, so there's a space here. So this word will be an element of the array. And this function actually returns an array. So we don't need to worry about creating our own array. The function will create the array for us. And we can see that if we console log um, array of words. And to actually run this file, all we need to do is type node and then the name of the file, so big O.js. And as you can see, it logs the array of words that was created from the string. There's too many items in the array for it to show all of them. Um, we don't need to show all of them, we just need to understand what's happening here. So now we have an array containing all of these words. And the function that we're going to be creating is called linear search. So we'll just do function linear search and it takes in an array, which is going to be the array of words, and then it takes in a target, which is going to be the word that we're searching for. 
Okay, so before we actually write the code for this function, let's step back and get a general understanding of what's going on here. So we have two long strings here. We have a big string and a medium string. So if we go ahead and um, let's see, let's comment medium string out. Actually, we don't even need to comment it out. Let's just go into the parentheses here and change inner parentheses to big string. And we'll just comment out this function. And then we'll go ahead and do node big O.js again. And with this, you can see the contents of the actual string because when we're inside of the file, you actually can't see how large the contents of the string are because the whole entire string is on one line. But when we actually print out the contents of the string, you can see that the string is, um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty large string. Like, I'm still scrolling up and up and up and up, and I'm not going to be able to get to the top of this. I mean, I will be able to if I sat here and kept scrolling, but that's not gonna happen. Anyways, so we'll go ahead and go back into the file, and that's the big string. So let's see, change inner parentheses. Let's see what the medium string is looking like. And to be quite honest with you, you're not gonna be able to notice the difference between the two um, by just looking at uh, actually, you can. <laughs> so let's clear this and we'll run that again. And yeah, you see how short the medium string is. This probably should just be called small string. But even this string is fairly large in its contents. So what we're going to do is we're going, well, what we already have done is we've converted this entire string into an array containing each word within this string. So we'll go back into the file and what we're going to create is this linear function that's actually going to traverse the array that was made from these very long strings and search for one word in particular. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and create that word now. So like, I don't know, let's just call it a word. And then we'll say we're searching for the word cow. And then inside of the actual function, this is where we need to actually create the logic and implement the algorithm. This is a fairly simple algorithm cr to create. Any linear algorithm is essentially just looping through an iterable. So it's pretty much, if you understand how loops work, then you can create a linear search algorithm fairly easy. So let's actually do something extra. Let's go ahead and um, create a count variable and we'll set it equal to zero. And as we iterate through the array, we'll just increment the count variable. So at the end of the for loop, we will be able to see how many words are contained within the array. And then it can give us a better understanding of the size of both the medium string and the big string. So let's go ahead and create a for loop here. So Here's our for loop. Within that for loop, let's start by just console logging array and then the index. And also let's increment our count. So plus equals one for every iteration. And at the end, we'll also console log. Let's just put count and then put our count So we're not um, using the target, the target yet because we're not implementing the search yet. We're just going to iterate through the actual array for now. Okay, so now let's go ahead and hmm, let's comment out this. Actually, we could just delete this medium string console log because we don't need that in our console when we're trying to see what's happening with this function. And let's save and then just row. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. So we didn't actually invoke our function. So what we want to do is we want to invoke the function passing in array of words and our word. The word won't actually be used as explained before because we're not doing anything with the word currently, but this is just so we can see what's being iterated through. So we can go ahead and run our code. And as you can see, we're console logging each word for each iteration. And this goes way up here. Um, we're not gonna go all the way to the top, but as you, you can see by looking at the count here, there's 9,998 words that are logged. So we can go back into our function 
and then let's actually uh, create the array for the big string as well so we'll change we'll do array of words too and we'll change this word to big string I mean this uh, variable so now we have an array of words one which is the medium string an array of words two which is the big string and we can just go ahead and change this to array of words too and this way we can see how many words are in the big string as well so we can go ahead and do this again and as you can see the big string takes a lot longer to console log each individual word and also as you can see here we have 199,941 words in the big string so oops so we can go back in and let's see let's continue making our function here so basically all linear search does is it checks every element in the array and it compares it to the target and once we find the target or if we don't find the target it will iterate through the entirety of the array but if we find the target we can return whatever we want we can return true saying that the target exists within the array or we can actually return the target word uh, let's just return let's, let's just return true so I don't need this um, console log anymore so let's go ahead and say if array I is equal to target then we'll return true and let's just keep it simple like that for now actually let's go back in here and let's find a word that we know to exist in the array let's go all the way to the end of the array though so primus we'll use this word here okay and we'll use that as our target word And now you can actually run this to see if it actually works. Oh, sorry, we're not logging the results. So here, let's just log the results. And we get true. It finds the word. The word exists within the array. So I know that cow does not exist within the array. So let's see if we get false. So let's run it. Hmm. What happened there? Hmm. Oh, it's undefined because there's only a return value if the word exists within the array. So, so actually what we want to do is instead of only returning true if the item that we're searching for is found, we also want to go down here and return false. So what it's going to do is it's going to iterate through the entirety of the array and if the item is found in the array, we're going to return true. And if the item's never found, there is no return. The for loop finishes here. And then we're just gonna console log the count. And then after console logging the count, we're just going to return false. So when all is said and done, with this linear search algorithm, we're only taking into consideration the highest order part of the function. So we're only taking into consideration this for loop because this for loop is the only part of the function that scales with the actual input to the function, which is why we would say that this particular part of this function is O of n because it scales linearly or proportionally with the length of the array or the length of the input. So when taking constants like this line into consideration, it's important to understand that these lines don't actually scale with the function. Regardless of how large the input is to the function, these lines remain constant, which is why we don't necessarily want to take them into consideration when considering the efficiency of an algorithm as a whole. Because as the input grows, these lines are relatively insignificant when taking into consideration very large inputs to the function. So when taking big O into consideration, when we're trying to evaluate the complexity of a function, if you see a function that is similar to this linear search function in that the worst case scenario is that we need to iterate through every element of an array, this function is classified as an O of n or linear function. And this example hopefully helped you to understand why.